The Independence Pass John Doe, 1970, identified as Gardner Paul Smith. Two men were hiking on July 15, 1970, several miles east of Independence Pass Summit in Colorado. They would discover our John Doe in a ditch alongside the road. He was covered by rockfall. They believe he was five foot six to five foot seven and around 125 to 150 pounds. He had on three pairs of socks and tennis or hiking shoes with an unworn sock over his left shoe, which is a little odd. He was carrying seven dollars and a razor. There was no identification with him. There was some damage to his remains that they felt had been done by a snowplow after the fact. There were plans to have the FBI fingerprint him, but if they did, it wasn't noted. The Herald Democrat would publish a story on June 22, 1970. They would list his age as being in his 20s and around 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 8. While they believed his age to be in the 20s, they were wrong by a couple of decades. One of the shocking facts of this story is that Colorado had forgotten him. A man named John Pearson, who was a Vietnam vet, it was him who took it upon himself, and this led to a grave belonging to an unnamed man. John Pearson took it upon himself to discover who the man was, and thanks to him, it happened. Unfortunately, John passed away in March of 2021 without knowing that it was his motions that would lead the man to a name. John had contacted an analyst with the CBI, which is the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. That analyst met with him in August of 2011 and even went to the grave. That's the worst part of these cases. So many are completely lost. Thanks to Pearson, however, this John Doe was back on the radar of Colorado law enforcement. They actually looked for records in this case, and they intended to work it again. But there were zero records. Whatever records belonged to this were gone. They did, however, manage to find a mention in a local paper at one point. So clearly the authorities knew about it. Two years later, in April of 2013, investigators returned and tried again. Still, no records were found. They exhumed the man and managed to get a fingerprint. But then the fingerprint led nowhere. DNA was extracted and sent to the University of Northern Texas. They had intended to rebury the man, but for some reason, it didn't happen. Instead, his remains stayed at the Bailey Kent home. Then they were again found when the funeral home was raided by the sheriff's office in 2021. It was after this that he was reburied. I had some interesting comments by a group of people in one of my John Doe videos. Without going too far into it, a group of them sort of ganged together to get mad at my suggestion that police should identify these men and women. I just thought it was an interesting choice on a John Doe video. They assert identifying people is a waste of money. Because others were fully agreeing, I kind of wondered how many believe this. It does seem that a lot of cases are forgotten and without paperwork. There's a lot of reasons paperwork could get lost. And of course, this man was found over 50 years ago in this case. But thankfully, the CBI didn't give up. It would take DNA to arrive at his name, finally identifying the man as Gardner Paul Smith. Gardner's DNA would lead to a cousin, who would then in turn call Jeannie Smith Giada, who is now a realtor in Austin, Texas. Jeannie is Gardner's daughter. What she knew of her father was that he had deserted his family shortly after her birth and had never been heard from again. It turns out that he may not have entirely walked away after all. She was later contacted by a forensic genealogist at the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, and they would provide her with a 2016 Herald Democrat article describing the story of finding the Independence Pass John Doe. Jeannie would share that she spent the last 60 years angry at her father for walking away, and her mother and other family members were upset enough not to even share information about him. Gardner Smith was born September 22, 1930, and he attended school at Modesto High School in California. He would have been 40 years old had he lived to the day he'd been found. The Smith family included a younger brother named Armour, and all of them were a skiing family. It was a family-wide passion. 
and his father Paul's obituary in the Modesto Bee lists him as having created a ski resort in California. His father Paul discovers skiing in 1936 on a trip to the Midwest. In fact, Paul's wife too was a skier, so it makes sense the boys would be too. Paul Smith lived to be 93 and his wife 88, never knowing what happened to Gardner. It appears they believed him to be alive as he's listed as a survivor in their obituaries. It seems his whole family believed he walked away, which is sad on a very different level for everyone involved. For Gardner, skiing was everything. He would even ski while he was in college on a team for the University of Nevada, located in Reno. Jeannie had held on to one clipping of her dad, and that was for a win he had on a team when he took first in events for jumping, cross-country, and downhill skiing. After college, Gardner joined the Army. He would serve for two years in active duty, eventually ending up in the reserves for the next four. He was honorably discharged in June of 1957. By 1960, he would be a writer. He eventually ended up being a freelance writer who would write in Aspen about those who were believed to be contenders for the Olympics. His writing would eventually lead him to Argentina, and it was there that he met and fell in love with a woman named Jennifer, who was actually from England. The couple would travel back to the U.S., where they would marry, and she would eventually give birth to one child in 1962. This was the daughter, Jeannie, who was recently contacted by the genealogist. The marriage didn't last, however, and they would divorce in 1968. At this time, Jeannie was six. Her mother would quickly remarry, but that man would pass in 1974. Jeannie would explain that she struggled, as her mother was not a nurturing person. As a result, she would end up traveling from the Bay Area to Modesto, where Gardner's parents lived. She eventually found herself living with them permanently. She had many questions about her father, but there were none that anyone was willing to answer. She pushed her mom for information, but her mom refused to talk. An article would appear in 1983 in an issue of Ski Magazine, and this article was dedicated to Gardner Smith and his disappearance, titled The Mystery of Gardner Smith. The article was written by Dick Dorworth, who was himself a skier and a coach. It turns out that Dick respected and was friends with Gardner. Gardner was a decade older, and Dick looked up to him. Dick would recall a story in the magazine about how he and Gardner had flown to Guatemala during the 1954 revolution, and they would find themselves in jail together. He would relate that Gardner would often say, Whatever's right, friend. Dick would state that the last time he saw Gardner was in 1968. Gardner was living on the road at the time and trying to market a ski pole grip that he had designed. He had also designed a double lens goggle, but neither invention took off. By 1968, Gardner was 38 and he wasn't doing well physically. The activities in his youth had taken a toll on his body. He would end up staying on Dick's couch for a week and Dick would describe him as having a sharp mind despite his physical troubles. Jeannie was aware of this article that had happened and in her quest of trying to learn about her father, she would actually find herself traveling to see him in Idaho in order to ask Dick some questions about her dad. This would have been around 2006 or 2008. And despite the pain of feeling abandoned by her father, part of her wanted to know who he was and what he was about. The gap in time between when he last saw his family and whatever happened to him means it's open-ended as to whether the result was an accident or foul play, as no one really knows exactly what was going on with her father at the time. Jeannie believes her father was homeless at the end of his life and that he might have been experiencing some mental health issues. Gardner was very familiar with Colorado, and this was because of his love of skiing. He was especially familiar with Aspen, and he was found about three hours away from there, in Twin Lakes. It appears the conclusion of this case is that it was likely an accident, but his daughter isn't so sure. She feels he may have been a victim and was placed where he was found. The sock over the one shoe is puzzling. There's no mention of if there was a hole in the shoe, 
or some other reason that might have led to this, but I imagine that would have been addressed were it so. While this answers the question ultimately of what happened to him, there's that gap between when he was found and when he walked away from his family, and unfortunately, no one knows why he left or even why he was in Colorado. There seems to be an implication that his health wasn't that he could go skiing. Gardner's wife, Jennifer Dillard, died on July 5, 1994, and like his parents, she never knew what happened to him. Gardner's daughter would email her father's friend, Dick Dorworth, who wrote that article so long ago, to tell him of her father's identification before it hit the news. Gardner Paul Smith went unidentified for 52 years. Had he lived, he'd be 91 today. As always, thank you so much for watching. The current goal for the channel is 20,000 subscribers. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. Thank you so much to everybody commenting. Even with just an emoji, it really has made a big difference. Without it, there isn't a channel. So thank you guys so much. Take care of yourselves and each other.